رمضان زمان البركات رمضان زمان الحسنات رمضان زمان البركات رمضان زمان الحسنات رمضان مجال الصلوات طوبى للنفس بتقواها رمضان كريم 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 شهر عظيم 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 رمضان كريم 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 شهر عظيم 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 قم للعبادة تلقى السعادة قم للعبادة تلقى السعادة تلقى السعادة تلقى النعيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله الكريم صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين You are tuned into Islam the Natural Way. In today's presentation, Mufti Sajid Khan will speak to us on Zakah and Sadaqah in Ramadan. First, here is a recitation from Al-Quran by Brother Ismail White. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajim Bismillahir rahmanir rahim فآت ذا القربى حقه والمسكين وبن السبيل ذلك خير للذين يريدون وجه الله وأولئك هم المفلحون وما آتيتم من ربا ليربو في أموال الناس فلا يربو عند الله وما آتيتم من زكاة تريدون وجه الله فأولئك فأولئك هم المضعفون صدق الله العظيم نحن الله سبحانه وتعالى ونصلي ونسلم على رسوله الكريم أما بعد Indeed all praises are for Allah the exalted in might the praiseworthy We praise him, we thank him, we seek his help, his guidance, his forgiveness We beseech his mercy we seek protection in Allah against his anger and his displeasure. We testify that none deserves to be worshipped but Allah Azza wa Jal. And we also testify that our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is his servant and last messenger. My dear brothers and sisters, in Islam, charity has such a great position that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it an obligation on Muslims, an obligation in the form of zakah. And not only is it an obligation, but it is also an act of worship and the third pillar of Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Quran, Establish prayer, give zakah, and bow down with those who bow down. And the Prophet ﷺ mentions in a narration which establishes zakah being the third pillar of Islam, Bunyal Islam ala khams, that Islam is built on five pillars. 
testifying that none deserves to be worshipped but Allah, establishment of salah, and thirdly, the paying of zakah. So what is the meaning of zakah? Literally, zakah means to purify or to grow, to grow in goodness. And it also means to bless. And in the context of the sharia, zakah refers to a specific amount of wealth that is paid at a specific period of time to a specific group of people. And so we'll be looking at this definition of zakah. It has three parts. A specific amount of wealth that is paid to a specific group of people and also uh, at a specific period of time. But why is zakah important to us? And what is the wisdom or what are the wisdom behind the ordainment of zakat. Firstly, it is to purify and to cleanse our soul from stinginess, miserliness, sins and misdeeds. So when we pay zakat, it cleanses and purifies our soul from the attachment that we have to that wealth and the misdeeds and sins that we might commit. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, خُذْ مِنْ أَمْوَالِهِمْ صَدَقَةً تُطَهِّرُهُمْ وَتُزَكِّهِمْ بِهَا I take from their wealth, this zakah, in order to cleanse and purify them. Secondly, it cleanses, multiplies, and blesses a person's wealth. So when we pay our zakah, it does not cause our wealth to decrease. Rather, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increases our wealth. He puts barakah, blessing in our wealth. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa says, ma naqasat sadaqatun min ma." That this zakah will not cause our wealth to diminish. Rather, it will increase. Allah will bless our wealth. Thirdly, it tests our obedience to the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to see whether a person would give priority to the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over and above the love that he has for his wealth. And so when he gives and he spends for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then that is a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to see whether he is doing it for the pleasure of Allah or he will withhold out of love for that wealth which he has. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Quran, لَن تَنَالُوا الْبِرَّ حَتَّى تُنْفِقُوا مِمَا تُحِبُّونَ That you will not attain piety, righteousness, the love of Allah, closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until you spend from that which you love. And fourthly, it provides for the poor and the needy to aid them to fulfill the necessities of their life. It assists them also to come out of a life of poverty. And fifthly, it helps us to develop the habit of giving and spending for the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so these are the wisdom behind the ordainment of zakah. And we should not just look at zakah being an obligation upon us but we should also look at the benefits which comes with zakah when we pay our zakah what are some of the benefits allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned zakah 32 places in the quran and in most places allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions zakah along with the establishment of salah and so this shows the importance of paying our zakah and also the rewards and benefits that a person would receive for paying zakah. That just as our salah is important and we would receive many benefits by performing our salah in this life as well as the next, similar would be that of paying our zakah. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Quran, Aqimu salah wa atu zakah wa ati'ur rasul al-a'alakum turahamun. By means of paying our zakah, by paying our zakah, we will be able to attain the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And establish salah, pay our zakah, obey the messenger so that you may attain the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In another verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O oh, rahmati wasi'at kulla shay, that my mercy encompasses everything. And so the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the greatest blessings a person can achieve, by means of which we will enter into the paradise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَسَأَكْتُبُهَا لِلَّذِينَ يَتَّقُونَ وَيُؤْتُونَ الزَّكَاءَ وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ بِآيَاتِنَا يُؤْمِنُونَ That I will ordain my mercy for those who have taqwa and those who would pay zakah and those who would believe in our ayats, in our signs. Zakah also causes the expiation of our sins. And when we would pay our zakah, it is a means of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgiving us of our sins. The Prophet ﷺ says, As-sadaqatu tutfi'u l-khati'ah kama yutfi'u l-ma'an nar. That this zakah, it extinguishes sins the very same way water would extinguish a fire. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed many benefits in a pain of zakah. Now who has to pay zakah? Zakah would become compulsory on a person firstly if that person is a Muslim. That person is an adult Muslim of sound mind and secondly that person possesses the minimum amount of wealth which is known as the Nisab for an entire lunar year. So the nisab is that amount of wealth or property which a person must own in order for zakat to become obligatory upon him. And our Prophet ﷺ has set the rate of zakat of the nisab to the equivalent value of either 7.5 grams of gold or 612 0.4 grams of silver and this will be calculated according to our local currency and it may vary from year to year because the price of gold and silver would fluctuate frequently. The conditions that the Nisab must fulfill, there are two major conditions. Firstly, the Nisab must be free from our needs our basic needs, the minimum being food, clothing, and shelter. Because zakah has been ordained to aid the poor. And nisab is important to ensure that the payer of zakah is not in need himself. So, on what type of wealth would zakah be paid on? It is not only the cash that we have in our homes or the savings that we have in our bank accounts. There are other types or forms of wealth that we may also have to pay zakat on, such as gold and silver, stocks and shares that a person have invested in, properties that a person might have for investment, uh, agricultural produce, money that a person might have lent to someone and it is easy accessible whenever he, he requires it. A livestock such as cow, goats and sheep. So our business assets and merchandise, these are some other forms of wealth that a person may also be required to pay zakah on. And the second condition of the nisab is also, it is hawlan al hawl the passing of a complete lunar month, a complete lunar year, while 
that person is in possession of the nisab. And this condition is only specific to certain types of wealth, such as cash, gold and silver, uh, business assets and merchandise, etc. Other types of wealth, uh, the condition of the passing of an entire year may not be necessary and does not apply to that. For example, or farm and agricultural produce and certain types of minerals and a treasure that a person may find. So we need to consult and get some guidance from our, our sheikh and maulanas, the alims, the learned brothers in our communities as to which wealth we may need to pay zakah on that we may possess and also the amount that we will need to pay. So for the yearly zakatable wealth, a person would be required to pay two and a half percent of that wealth upon the passing of an entire lunar year and he's in possession of the nisab and for every other year that follows that person would have to pay his zakat at the same time when he would have paid the first zakat. So this means that it is not necessarily a condition that a person has to pay his zakah in the month of Ramadan. People would pay their zakat in the month of Ramadan for two major reasons. One, it is easier to remember that you have to pay your zakat when the month of Ramadan comes. And secondly, for the rewards that are associated in the month of Ramadan. So a person would desire to benefit, to have maximum benefit from the zakat that he pays. So he would pay it in the month of Ramadan. Who are the recipients of zakat? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions eight categories of people who are eligible to receive zakat in the Quran. إِنَّمَا الصَّدَقَاتُ لِلْفُقَرَاءُ وَالْمَسَاكِينُ وَالْعَامِلِينَ عَلَيْهَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that this zakah will be given to the poor and the needy. The poor are those who may have sufficient or they do not have surplus wealth. And the needy are those who may hardly even have sufficient what is sufficient for them. وَالْعَامِلِينَ عَلَيْهَا And those who were appointed and authorized by those in authority in the zakah department to collect and distribute zakah. That person would be eligible to be paid from the zakat funds. وَالْمُؤَلَّفَةِ قُلُوبُهُمْ وَفِي الرِّقَابِ And those newly reverted Muslims whose iman might be weak and those who might be inclined to Islam so as a means of encouraging them, zakah can be given to them. وَفِي And to assist those in captivity to pay for their freedom, zakah can be given to those as well. وَالْغَارِمِينَ وَفِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَبْنِ السَّبِيلِ And those who are in debt, and those who are in debt refers to that person whose debt is due. There are certain situations wherein a person may owe a large amount of money, but he has time to pay off his debt. He has months or years to pay off his debt. So when a person is calculating uh, his debt and he's excluding his debt from his savings, he would exclude that amount which is due at present and the remaining of his savings he will calculate uh, his zakat from that amount. So those whose debt are due, it is it would be permissible to them for them to receive zakat to help them to pay off their debt. Wa fi sabilillah, and the seventh category of the recipients of zakat are those in the path of Allah subhanahu wa taala, and in specific, jihad fi sabilillah in the path of Allah subhanahu. Wabin is Sabil and we fear the traveler who might have exhausted all of his provisions 
And in order for him to continue his journey, it would be permissible for that person to receive zakah to complete his journey. And this is on condition that that person does not have nisab wealth back home. And even if he has that wealth, he does not have access to that wealth. So these are the categories who are eligible to receive zakah as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in Quran. There is also another aspect of monetary ibadah which we would call sadaqa, voluntary charity. Voluntary charity can be given by anyone and in any amount. The companions of the Prophet ﷺ, they were very generous in giving large amount of their wealth throughout their lives. At times, some of them, they would give their entire investment, such as their entire garden. And at times, some of them, they give half of their wealth and even their entire wealth, such as Umar bin Khattab and Abu Bakr radiallahu anhuma. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, لِيُنْفِقْ ذُو سَعَةِ مِنْ سَعَةِ that the person who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed with abundance of wealth, then he should spend out of that wealth. So he should give extra, not only that which is compulsory upon him in the form of zakah, but he should also give extra according to his means. And those who man qudira alayhi rizqu fal yunfiq mimma atahullah. And those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not granted abundance of wealth, then he can still give charity according to his means. The Prophet ﷺ was very generous throughout his life and he was very charitable. And when it comes to the month of Ramadan, the Prophet ﷺ would be more generous. Ibn Abbas mentions, كَانَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمْ أَجْوَدَ النَّاسِ وَكَانَ أَجْوَدَ مَا يَكُونُ فِي رَمَضَانِ that the Prophet ﷺ was the most generous of people. And when it came to the month of Ramadan, the Prophet ﷺ was most generous in giving. So if Allah has blessed us, we should give more, more. And in the month of Ramadan, our rewards are multiplied tremendously. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Quran, الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ أَمْوَالَهُمْ بِاللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ سِرًّا وَعَلَانِيَ لَهُمْ أَجْرُهُمْ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ وَلَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهُ وَلَهُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ Those who would spend from their wealth by night and during the day, secretly and openly, they will receive their reward from their Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and their ultimate reward, which is entrance into paradise, la khawfun alayhim wa lahum yahzanun, there will be no fear and no grief upon them. So voluntary sadaqa, charity, is a virtuous deed in Islam, and it is proof of the iman of a believer. That when a person he would give charity, then his iman would increase. Whenever he gives, his iman would increase. And every single day, the Prophet ﷺ tells us, مَا مِنْ يَوْمٍ يُسْبِحُ الْعِبَادِ إِلَّا zilan. Every single day, the servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wakes up, then two angels descend, and they make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma anfiq, Allahumma a'ti munfiqan khalafan wa Allah grant the one who spends who spends for your sake who spend and gives for your sake grant him increase and baraka blessing in his wealth recompense him and the other says Allahumma a'ti mumsikan talafan and O Allah the one who withholds then give him nothing else besides ruination so Ramadan is therefore the ideal month for us to increase in our charity. And if zakah is 
compulsory upon us, then we should pay our zakah and we should make it a habit from now to practice in giving regular charity so that even out of the month of Ramadan, we would have this trait within us of being a charitable person and thus earning the rewards promised by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our fast. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our zakah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our charity. And may He give us the tawfiq that we become charitable individuals and thus earning the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Aqooli qawli hadha wa astaghfirullaha li wa lakum wa assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Insha'Allah in tomorrow's presentation we will discuss the month of the Quran. We close with Dua Al-Kafara. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha ila ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Until tomorrow. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. رمضان صيام ودعاء رمضان أمان وصفاء رمضان صيام ودعاء رمضان أمان وصفاء رمضان سلوك وعطاء أهلا بقدومك يا رمضان السعادة قم للعبادة تلقى السعادة تلقى السعادة تلقى النعيم